Time now for Medical Monday. Dr. Sean Hennigan with Baycare Clinic is here with me. We're talking about shoulder pain. How does a shoulder injury typically happen? Well, most shoulder injuries uh, or most shoulder pain uh, mm -hmm. comes about from a you know, sudden change in activity. Uh, somebody decides they want to go out and shovel the snow that you haven't done in quite a while. Mm -hmm. Maybe a new resolution to, to start on a new exercise program. So there's a sudden increase in activity mm -hmm. um, and, and they start to develop some aching discomfort in their shoulder uh, and it slowly builds from there. But a lot of people have that. When does that kind of go into a real medical issue? Um, you know, shoulder pain is very common. Mm -hmm. um, people can have uh, some shoulder pain and more often than not they'll treat on their own with some over-the-counter medications right. and avoiding painful activities. So it becomes a medical issue when people do those things and the symptoms of pain uh, fail to improve or actually worsen. Okay, and then what do people do after that? Is it you know automatically going to surgery or are there other things you can do? No, a lot of people uh, come in and get evaluated and receive a diagnosis mm -hmm. and there's usually some conservative treatment options that we might uh, recommend. Maybe a little bit of physical therapy, mm -hmm. um, maybe some medications or even sometimes like a cortisone injection, things like that. Okay, and then let's talk now about some of the treatment options that are out there. Sure. So what, what would some of the surgeries be like? Uh, the, the surgical options uh, really vary uh, with the diagnosis. Okay. So that if somebody has um, you know, a tendon related condition mm -hmm. um, and it gets to the point where surgery is required, that might benefit from an arthroscopic or minimally invasive type surgery. Mm -hmm. The same with people who have uh, shoulder joints which don't stay in the socket okay. uh, or dislocate. Um, you know, if somebody has a condition like arthritis uh, that's failed conservative management, mm -hmm. then we get into, you know, options like uh, shoulder joint replacement or reverse shoulder replacement, things like that. I oh, gotcha, okay. How have things changed over the years? I know you've been doing this a long time. How, uh, how have things developed? Uh, you know, there's been quite a, quite a lot of change in shoulder surgery world. Mm -hmm. um, most of the changes have been um, focused on improving the, the devices that we put in mm -hmm. or implant into people so that they last longer. Mm -hmm. There's been a, a large push recently to improve the reliability and technique of, of putting the device in. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, using a preoperative CT scan to plan your surgery and actually do a simulated operation before you bring the patient to the operating room. Oh, really? And then developing patient-specific instruments to allow you to do that surgery reproducibly and quickly in the operating room. And I'm sure all of this helps with recovery time. It all helps with recovery, yeah. It helps with outcomes and everything else. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thanks so much for being with yeah. us, Doc. For more information about shoulder surgery and to see if it's a right fit for you, just visit our website and click on the Wisconsin.